This whole attack hinges on the fireball, but we can't stop there. We have to go fast beyond that. Here we go. Fireball's going in hot. And there's all the invisibility and throw it deep in the base there. Welcome to the lower bracket finals of the Mulan Cup. Only three teams are left in the competition. It is X Team Early Bird who is waiting in the grand finals after they took down Navi last week. And down in the lower bracket fighting to go to the grand finals to meet them is Navi and Millisim MG. This is an elimination round. If you win this, you advance to the grand finals and we'll see who will take that spot. Diva kicking us off today with some room artists. And you know what's been crazy? All the crazy attacks that Stars and Klaus have been doing lately that put the room artists away. We've seen Navi put the room artists away a lot, but I typically see them break it out like uh, twice, probably a war, and just go in here for these early attacks to make sure that they can get the bases that they can see that are vulnerable to them down early and then give their all-star attack there's a little more time to plan so that's what we're gonna expect this for here that's what i expect i guess we'll see what happens but dima off to a good start here just wrap around the overgrowth here and i also want to see what millisim mg has up their sleeve as well do you think they're gonna break out a bunch of riders here or do you think you'll see some variety from them as well Maybe some dragon attacks, maybe some giant arrow. I guess, I guess only time will tell, but it looks like this one is all the way under control as Dima makes his way back into the core of the base there. There's the rage, there's the freeze, but the freeze a little bit off there. He's got another freeze, so we can lock it down there. And he's sitting on two hero abilities, but look at the time here. We would expect that we would have very fast times and they have to prepare themselves for the eventuality that we do have the double perfect horde. And so time would be the tiebreaker as Dima locks it in at a minute and 20 cents. It appears that Millicent MG is also going to break out Rubrettis for their open attack, which was expected. He will go ahead and pop the, the healer puppet the moment that he begins the attack there on the right side and move the queen along the right flank there with the frozen arrow and the healers that were spawned. But the Rubrettis will go right up the middle of the base here. The Siege Strike is at the very bottom beneath to get this... Uh, this multi-inferno down. It's doing a lot of damage to the troops that came out of the Sage Bricks, but the king deploys over the far left side of the base. Their headhunter's down with him. Get his way through with the ice golem into the defensive heroes in that area there and push the town hall. He's got a big Tesla farm there. And the Tesla farm does have me worried a little bit there because if the king misses the town hall, he definitely could have trouble. In the core of the base there, Monoth has a skeleton skull on it. Overgrowth at the very top core of the base there. Deal with that multi-inferno so we can wrap it around it with the king. Called again. Stalled for another time, and now the world champion is locked onto him. He's wasting this giant gauntlet there, but he is, with the help of some Valkyries, getting the town hall down to the world champion, turning north there and avoids the town hall blast and poison, and he's looking good there. The Overgrowth wakes up, and he needs to get his way into the Bolting Inferno there. The Queen is in a good position to step in and take it. She's going to get the Bolting Archer Tower first. He does have the Scatter under control there. The world champion moved across there, and he does sustain control. Not an easy base to tackle. All these bases with all these islands off defenses can always be a little bit difficult to get into those specific defenses and make sure that you have them under control but he does get it done and the time on that one is going to put them in the lead they have a 13 second advantage out of the gate now that we got some of the root rider attacks out of the way navi will switch things up and send in the dragons we got double clone we got giant arrow shooting across the middle of the base there hitting the sweeper the faces to the left which makes so that the dragons are definitely coming in from the left he will Get the queen to finish collapse into the eagle artillery down south. So she spawns the healers there. And he's going to try to do out the core here. But we got to deliver this blip. And we got to get the value with it. What's inside though? Is it super minions? Is it balloons? He's got a bunch of invisibility. And he will drop out a super minion bomb. Make the town hall directly invisible. And skip every other building around it. And then take it all out there while he stands on top of it. Reaches away. Gets the defensive road champion down. And now back onto the town hall. He will claim it. That was a perfect value right there. That was perfect value. And that attack right there, instead of like all the balloons and such like that, is actually much more resistant to the bloom falling early because the Super Beasts have so much range there that they actually can reach out of the core or reach into the core if they actually drop on the outside, I mean. But he does have the healers that the Queen was using. Transfer over to the World Champion. She'll pick them up and keep on moving. And he passes the Minimark here. It's a little bit slow for what we would prefer. I mean, dragon attacks we know can go very fast there. Rootrunner attacks also one of the fastest attacks in the game. 
But this one is hanging on just fine. He's got the extra invisibility. He'll pop the road champ at the hog puppet. He'll surge his way forward there. She'll get into the expo and she'll take it down while she's still under the invisibility of the spirit fox there. Goes invisible one more time and easily pick up the rest of the defenses here and see how these gas skillies. There we go. Get off of them. Get on to the last defense. A minute and 30 in the clock here as Kazuma locks in the second one for Navi. This base looks so similar to the one that we just saw Kazuma take down with the dragons. But try hard is going to take a try at it with the root riders but we need to get him to the core of the base there that's not an easy thing to do now the, the trick here i think is if we want to go after a base like this with root riders is that we don't overgrowth out the entire core unless we want to go with like a double overgrowth and wrap around the entirety of the base and then go back to the core i think usually we want to get to the core here and we want to leave a layer in the core to be able to get into there initially and just thin it out a little bit there that's exactly what he does there. reaches outside of the right side of the core and then doesn't take out the entirety of the core. That allows just us three bullet troops to go in there. Although he's not really getting a lot. The king is right there, though. He's got the siege direction that was able to clap to the far right side of the base there. Wiz is working on the Eagle Artillery. Valkyrie's in the area as well. And now he's got troops going back over the core. The we're champions. We go over to the Eagle Artillery. Get it done over there. But the king under Phoenix over the right side. Keeps on working that area there. He'll go ahead and start to use his spells as the troops go back into the core. It never got thinned out, though. It never got thinned out. And so he needs to get through that core. And right now he's kind of struggling. Oh, this is... Oh. Oh. Oh, no! Okay, he's got a rage. He's got a queen ability. He doesn't have walls open, though. Valkyries are working on the walls, though. Okay, Valkyries, go, Valkyries, go, Valkyries. Okay, take the jump. Queen's gonna step around. But the queen's gonna have that jump wear out there by the time she can get into it. This is the problem. He can't reach the town hall from outside of the core compartment. The queen needs to hurry. Hurry and get through the jump before it fades. Queen? Queen, okay, she's in. She's in. She had me worried. He'll bop the healer bump and try to keep it alive. But this has cost him a lot of time at a bare minimum. And I'm not 100% sure if he's even got the triple yet. He's got one more scatter shot to make his way through. And he's going to be standing inside the town of poison. But he's got the unicorn. He's got the healer. And he will go directly over the scatter shot. And he will lock on and take it down. I guess a frozen arrow doing a lot of favors right here. And getting the slow down of the town hall and of the scatter shot. Poison tower rearm. And that is more time. If it throws, it does throw. And that is extra precious seconds there. As this one goes over two minutes. And maybe... Maybe he should have been doing a super minion bomb. I guess the base that Kazuma attacked was slightly different, but like the overall trend of it was pretty much the same. I don't know. However, Navi now has a very significant time advantage as we go into Gaku. And it looks like Gaku will send in a blimp of his own. This one is going to be mainly... Super Barbarians and Lalo. Kind of a weird mix here, but... Oh, I like this. I like this a lot. Okay. Gettys drop in. Lots of clones. Take out the core of the base there. He's got the balloons that were protected under the word ability that are able to wipe out the entire left side of the base. He got the CC pull. Queen in for the very bottom. Is able to push in with the Frozen Arrow and the Healer Puppet. Navi is not going to lean on the Rubiters. Like, they opened with a couple of Rubiters just to get the war started, but they're switching away from them, and they are... Doing some crazy attacks here so far. I like this. I like this a lot. I love the super minion bomb with the dragons in general. But I like the double clone Yeti bomb even more. But the king over the right side of the base there steps his way in. He gets the best of Rogue Champion of the way. Rogue Champion will push over to the town hall. He's got a freeze here. She can definitely push through it. I wonder if he wants to invest the rage into the Rogue Champion though. He does. He does. He'll freeze it up as well. And the Rogue Champion might be able to dodge the poison right there. Or the blast. No, neither. Okay, I'll get the Eagle Artillery down. But look at the time. Look at the time of this one. He's going to get that Expo down up top there. He had 100% under control here. No Root Riders necessary as he locks it in at a minute and 18 seconds. Nice job, Gaku. And Navi has a third triple. And as soon as Navi puts the Root Riders away, so does Millicim MG. Temper in with Super Barbarians and Electro Dragons. We got... A little bit of lightning, just enough to tag out a sweeper. But he'll start at the queen from the far right side of the base. There's the king in from the far left side of the base. Wall break both of them in to go into both flanks here. Get the defensive queen out of the way. Queen can push into the defensive world champion. And the Electro Dragons can push through this very, very, very dense area. Look at the potential for Electro Dragon chains in this area. But he's got to keep them alive here. Got to keep him protected. Got to use the freezes and the ranges to get as big a chase as possible. And need to get the town hall down right here. Very, very important. e drags make their way in down south. And the chains are doing exactly what you'd expect them to do. Wipe it out that entire area. But we need to get the clan castle destroyed. So that we can make sure the troops do not deploy out. 
And right now, I don't think that's going to happen. I think there's too much damage right there. He'll put the skeleton spell into the monolith up at the very top there. Try to stay out of the range of the Molten Inferno. But he is having a lot of skeletons wander into it. So he'll pop the Hog Puppet. Surge his way back in there. And did we ever get a Clan Castle pull here? We're about to. There we go. Clan Castle draws out there. I saw Hog step in. And a triple Ice Golem going to pop out? Or is it double Ice Golem? Either way, it will be something that will stall him. But he gets the model down. e drags still alive onto every single major defense here. And the chains should be able to clean up here very, very quickly. One more chain to the right. One more chain to the left. And this one is hooked. At a minute and 20 seconds. Nice job, Timber. Good call. E drags. Just tore that face off. Navi still has a very big time advantage. But let's see what happens here. What do we got? Ooh, that is a lot of rocket balloons. He's got double clone. He's got fireball. Okay, okay, stars. You've got our attention. You know, it's it seems like every war is a battle between stars and Klaus to steal the thumbnail. This one will take 25 rocket balloons and a fireball, but it's not going to stop there. He's got a double clone in this blimp. He'll land into the town hall, and his super minions popping out. Once again, super minion bomb wiping out the core of the base there and landing directly on the town hall, but make the town hall itself invisible so we can take out everything else in the area and then shift the invisibility, turns back over and secures the town hall and we'll finish wiping out the core. And with the core down, the rocket balloons with their haste can easily reach everything else on the base there. A poppy's got the world champion pushing in and look at the attack times of this one. Yeah, I'd say Navi has the number on this style of base. They have figured out the secret sauce to take it down and take it down fast. He is just now approaching the woman of arc here and I think he might go under a minute. Is he at a minute? It's one minute and two seconds. 62 seconds. And the base is gone with rocket balloons, double clone, and fireball. Can Klaus stop that? I guess we're about to find out. And while we wait for Klaus, let's get in for another rebounder attack from Hawk. There we go. Giant arrow shoots across the base here as Hawk goes in with lightning wiping out the middle there. Gets that invisibility tower triggered. Combines the lightning with the giant arrow to take out the monolith in the core of the base there. And now the queen can make her approach to the town hall. And there's almost no damage around the town hall. They should be able to easily step in and take it there with the queen. And he will push the rotus at the very bottom there. Get the rage to make sure they can get past the defensive queen without any trouble there. And then pop the word ability as soon as he goes into a little bit heavier damage and takes the eagle artillery strikes. But the queen is able to clear the town hall right at the perfect time to hopefully get these rune runners to take a turn back into towards the middle of the base. Valkyrie's right there. They can fight off the defensive CC. Able to get those ice golems out of the way there. No problem. And the queen will continue to clear on the right side of the base while the king dies out on the far left end. He's, he'll swarm that area with super fire and keep the rune runners staying towards the inside of the base there, reinforcing the outside. He's got the siege strikes. So he's able to push on the far outside of the base at the very top. And even wall broke them in to make sure they could push in backwards. And look at the attack time of this one. We said the last one was fast, but this one is equally as fast or just, just slightly slower, I guess. As this one is going to lock in at a minute and seven seconds. This war will come down to a duel between Klaus and Kingsman. Kingsman has the triple 36 seconds faster than Klaus. So Klaus will set the bar. And ladies and gentlemen, here we go. He's got Pekka's. He's got three healers, rocket balloons. What kind of equipment do we got to the heroes here? We see the giant gun of the king. We see the healer puppet of the queen. We see the fireball on the warden. Okay, Klaus, it's time to shine. No mistakes here. I guess we'll see what he can do. What do we do with three healers, though? He has three healers that he can spawn from his healer puppet, but he bought three of his own. But he also brought three earthquakes as well. All right, here we go. Klaus will go for the win if he can pull this off and do it quickly he spawns the healers over the side of the base there warden immediately deploys over the right side with the with the angry jelly the king at the very top of the base there the queen will push the eagle artillery king will get a wall break at the top of the base there but we got to get the fireball deep in the base this whole attack hinges on the fireball but we can't stop there we have to go fast beyond that here we go fireballs going in hot and there's all the invisibility and throw it deep in the base there but it misses it misses it goes north oh no 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 klaus 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 oh my god he's 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 this this is happening he's throwing he's throwing he's throwing he's throwing he's throwing what do you do you can't do anything you can't do anything we, we gotta get to the core here 
He's got to use the Log Launcher and the Road Champion to get to the core. But the Fireball, what caused it to throw north? It looked like he was perfectly set up there to throw it directly into the core. <laughs> Come on, Klaus. Come on, Klaus. We believed. And we will not get the look, the, the win that they're looking for if they can't find a way to pull this back. He'll put the Bass Bell over the left side of the base. This is not what he wanted to have happen here at all. Throw a Skeletal Spell down for the Monolith. He'll put in the Rock of Balloons. Put in his CC down there as well. But he manually opened the CC the moment he dropped it. Dropped it with Super Minions. And that's another mistake here. I feel like he's panicking. I feel like he's in full panic mode right here. As he tries to salvage this. But he'll put his Road Champion to the core of the base there. Get it to take the Town Hall down. And that's about the best he can do. He'll get the Rock of Balloons to gather percentage. And trim off the perimeter defenses, freeze up the defensive queen and the air defense over the side and try to get as much of the trash down because that is the only way that they can recover this attack here. What happened with the fireball? What the heck happened with the fireball? Klaus had the opportunity. If that fireball hit the town hall, that would have wiped out everything in the core. Clan Castle, both of the ricochet cannon, getting down the scatter shots, the monolith, everything was hinging on that fireball being delivered to the core. So let's watch it back here. Let's see exactly what caused it to throw north and see what the target actually was. I think it was the air defense up there, right? The king was supposed to clear that compartment up there. Like the king was right there in that compartment working to clear those defenses up there, and then he didn't. So fireball targeted not the town hall, but it was right below the battle builder. There was a battle builder right there. Oh my God, that base would have been so beyond crushed there if he would have got the fireball delivered onto the town hall, but that's not the way it played out. And now this war is in Kingsman's hands. He will go in with one final attack here that will eliminate Navi and send Milosim on to go face off with X-Team Early Bird in the grand finals of the Mulan Cup. Not the one we expected. I don't, I don't think anybody expected that. But then again, we've seen Klaus making mistakes on his fireball a lot recently. And it's the smallest little things there. One stray defense, and that fireball goes off in the wrong direction. And the attack obviously stopped at his tracks. But this one probably needs to hold to a one star. So I guess we'll see what happens. He still goes with the overgrowth, and he will wrap away from the town hall for now. To the premier trap, taking Eagle Artillery strikes. Eagle Artillery at the very end of the pathing for the Brew Riders, but very relatively close to the start of the path for the Queen, so she can reach over the wall and grab it shortly. Town Hall wakes back up. Got the rage, got two freezes. Gonna get the Town Hall down. If Town Hall goes down, then this is over right now. But as long as the Town Hall stays standing, then the dream stays alive here for Navi. He holds on to the spells here. He's taking a lot of damage. The Queen's still alive. He's got a lot of the riders out to the left side of the base there. He's got Valkyries out there. The Queen's wrapping in. Will support. There's the first freeze, but a little bit early on that freeze. He wasn't ready for that yet. Where Champion goes down early. He's holding. He's got a shot right there. Town Hall has to hold. Town Hall has to hold the line here. He's stepping into it. The Queen's right there. The Queen with the Hitler Puppet is able to step in. Town Hall goes down. And it is over for Navi, but not over for Millicent MG as they were not able to even get the attack speed that they needed to, to take down if Klaus was able to triple. Like if Klaus tripled, even if it was a slow one, this easily would have gone to them. But with the fireball missing and going way off the rails, Millicent MG takes the win and they're advancing to the grand finals. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new here, subscribe, like this video, and we'll see you in the next one.